From its scintillating blue hue to its frigid climate and turbulent storms, Neptune is an indigo sapphire among the incredible gems we've come to observe in our celestial neighborhood. Neptune, unlike other planets closer to Earth, cannot be seen with the naked eye, but that doesn't mean we haven't captured picturesque views of this beautiful planet through the means of telescopes. In 1821, Alexis Bovard published charts showing Uranus's orbit, but he noticed some kinks years later. In 1843, John Couch Adams took on this challenge, gathering data and working with Sir George Airy. Around the same time, Urbain Le Verrier independently calculated Neptune's position. However, it did not garner much attention. In June 1846, Sir George Airy convinced James Chalice to look for the planet after comparing Le Verrier's and John Couch Adams' estimates. Neptune was observed twice in August 1845, but Chalice didn't realize it due to outdated star maps and poor techniques. At the same time, Le Verrier told Johann Gottfried Galley, an astronomer at the Berlin Observatory, to look for Neptune. Galley, thanks to student Heinrich de Rest, found Neptune on September 23, 1846, close to Le Verrier's predicted location. The discovery sparked a rivalry between the French and British for credit. Eventually, an international consensus recognized Le Verrier and Adams as joint discovery partners. More than anything, I think it was a group effort. After Neptune's discovery, suggestions for names included Janus and Oceans. Le Verrier, the discoverer, suggested the name Neptune. He later attempted to name it after himself, but this was met with resistance. Astronomer Friedrich Georg Wilhelm von Struve favored the name Neptune, and it became widely accepted internationally. In most languages, the name Neptune is now used in variations. In Chinese, it's called the Sea King Star. In Hebrew, Rahab, and in Mori, it's called Tangaroa, which is a god of the sea. Different cultures added their own names, like Tullaklali and Nahuatli. These names show how diverse our world is. Le Verrier and John Adams laid the foundations for our current knowledge of the planet, and we've even been able to send spacecraft on flybys that have sent back priceless data about the planet. However, a lot about Neptune remains shrouded in mystery. So, what lies underneath its blue hues? And, despite being an ice giant, why do temperatures within Neptune's atmosphere seem to mysteriously increase? Voyager 2 is the only spacecraft to have visited Neptune. This historic encounter took place on August 25, 1989. This particular rendezvous is even more interesting because it was the last major planetary stop on Voyager 2's big interstellar journey. The approach taken by Voyager 2 to Neptune's enigmatic moon, Triton, was similar to the approach taken by Voyager 1 during its encounter with Saturn and its captivating moon, Titan. During this encounter, something unusual happened. The signals from the spacecraft took 246 minutes to reach Earth. This meant that we had to rely a lot on commands that were already set up to handle the complicated Neptune encounter. As Voyager 2 approached Neptune's moon, Nerid, it executed a near encounter with the moon. On August 25th, it ventured dangerously close to the very edge of Neptune's atmosphere. The things that happened next were really spectacular. Voyager 2 revealed the existence of a magnetic field that encircles the planet, a field that defied accepted wisdom by being offset from the planet's center, bearing a striking likeness to the magnetic field encircling Uranus. Further investigations carried out by Voyager 2 uncovered Neptune's rotational secrets. These discoveries were based on the careful analysis of radio emissions. The dazzling dynamism of Neptune's weather systems was revealed in Voyager 2, painting a portrait of a planet marked by perpetual atmospheric activity. The voyage led to the discovery of six previously unknown moons, which helped us understand Neptune's celestial family better. In addition, it was confirmed that Neptune has multiple rings around it, adding yet another layer of complexity to its profile. The precise measurement of Neptune's mass was one of the most significant outcomes of this flyby. This measurement, which was found to be only 0.5% off from the previous calculations, had big implications. The discovery effectively disproved the long-held notion that an unknown celestial body 
often referred to as Planet X, had a significant impact on the planetary paths of Neptune and Uranus. Both Neptune and its companion planet Uranus are classified as ice giants among the giant planets. Compared to more massive gas giants like Jupiter and Saturn, these ice giants have smaller sizes and higher concentrations of volatile substances. When scientists try to find exoplanets, they often use Neptune as a reference point. When bodies of comparable mass are discovered elsewhere in the universe, they are commonly referred to as Neptunes, akin to the term Jupiter, employed by astronomers to denote various extrasolar objects possessing similar characteristics to Jupiter. The inner structure of Neptune bears a striking resemblance to that of Uranus. The atmosphere comprises about 5 to 10 percent of its mass, and this atmosphere extends about 10 to 20 percent of the way towards its core. The atmospheric pressure of Neptune is extremely high, reaching about 10 gigapascals, which is about 100,000 times greater than the atmospheric pressure of Earth. As you get deeper into the atmosphere, you'll find more and more methane, ammonia, and water. Neptune's mantle is as heavy as 10 to 15 Earths and is rich in substances like water, ammonia, and methane. In planetary science, this mixture is referred to as icy, even though it is a hot, dense fluid known as a supercritical one. This fluid conducts electricity well and is sometimes called a water ammonia ocean. There may be layers in the mantle where water turns into a mix of hydrogen and oxygen ions, and even deeper, a state called superionic water, where oxygen forms crystals, but hydrogen ions move freely within the crystal lattice. At a depth of about 7,000 kilometers, it is possible that methane may experience a transformation into diamond crystals, which will descend in a manner similar to hailstones. This phenomenon is also believed to be occurring on Jupiter, Saturn, and Uranus. Some scientists think that at the top of Neptune's mantle, there might be a layer of liquid carbon with solid diamonds floating within it, based on high-pressure experiments conducted at the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory. The core of Neptune is thought to be composed of iron, nickel, and silicates, with a mass roughly 1.2 times that of Earth's. The pressure at the center of Neptune is astronomically high, reaching a staggering 7 megabars, which is more than twice that found at the center of our planet. The core of Neptune could reach temperatures of around 5,400 Kelvin, which is around 5,126 Celsius or 9,260 Fahrenheit. In Neptune's upper atmosphere, roughly 80% of the composition is hydrogen and about 19% is helium. Additionally, there is a small amount of methane present. Neptune's distinctive blue color is because methane absorbs certain wavelengths of light, particularly in the red and infrared part of the spectrum. Its blue color is a bit different from Uranus's mild blue. Neptune's atmosphere is made up of two main parts, the lower troposphere, where temperature drops as you go higher, and the stratosphere, where temperature goes up as you go higher. Beyond the stratosphere, lies the thermosphere, where pressures are lower, and this gradually transitions to the outer atmosphere. Computer simulations suggest that Neptune's troposphere contains clouds with varying compositions at different heights. Where the pressure is lower than one bar, methane can condense, forming clouds at the top. At pressures ranging from 1 to 5 bars, or about 100 to 500 kilopascals, clouds of ammonia and hydrogen sulfide may arise. At pressures of around 50 bars or 5.0 megapascals, where temperatures reach 273 Kelvin 0 degrees Celsius, water ice clouds could form. Even below these, there may be clouds of ammonia and hydrogen sulfide. It's interesting how high-altitude clouds on Neptune can cast shadows on the cloud deck. That's not visible. There exist distinct cloud bands that encircle the planet at consistent latitudes. These bands are wide-ranging from 50 to 150 kilometers and hover about 50 to 110 kilometers above the lower cloud deck. These altitudes are where the planet's weather activity happens, the troposphere. Weather doesn't take place in the higher stratosphere or thermosphere. In August 2023, something unusual happened. Neptune's clouds disappeared possibly due to a solar flare. 
Over 30 years of observations by the Hubble Space Telescope and ground-based telescopes have revealed that Neptune's cloud activity is linked to solar cycles rather than the planet's seasons. The spectral characteristics of Neptune suggest that its lower stratosphere is characterized by haziness, resulting from the condensation of substances formed through the ultraviolet breakdown of methane, such as ethane and ethane. There are trace amounts of carbon monoxide and hydrogen kyanide in the stratosphere. Neptune's stratosphere is warmer than Uranus's because it has a higher concentration of hydrocarbons. It's odd that Neptune's thermosphere is remarkably hot, reaching temperatures of 750 Kelvin, or about 890 Fahrenheit, and 476 Celsius, despite its distance from the sun, where the sun's ultraviolet radiation is typically insufficient to produce such temperatures. There are possible explanations for this heat, including interactions between the atmosphere and ions in Neptune's magnetic field or the dissipation of gravity waves from the planet's interior. It is also possible that traces of carbon dioxide and water were deposited by external sources, such as meteorites and dust. Neptune's magnetic field is similar to Uranus, but tilted at a steep 47-degree angle compared to its spinning. It's also shifted about 13,500 kilometers from the planet's center, similar to how Uranus's field tilts due to its sideways rotation. This magnetic field is produced by convection in a layer of electrically conductive liquids, possibly a mix of ammonia, methane, and water. As a part of its weather patterns, Neptune experiences highly dynamic and intense storm systems. The winds on this distant planet can reach speeds of nearly 600 meters per second, surpassing even supersonic velocity. Typically, by closely monitoring the movement of persistent clouds, scientists have observed wind speeds ranging from 20 meters per second in an eastward direction to a staggering 325 meters per second blowing westward. The uppermost cloud layer has prevailing winds that vary from 400 meters per second along the equator to 250 meters per second at the poles. Most of Neptune's winds flow in the opposite direction from the planet's rotation. There is a prograde rotation at high latitudes and a retrograde rotation at lower latitudes in the wind pattern on Neptune. This change in flow direction is thought to be a surface effect rather than a result of deeper atmospheric activities. There is a high-speed jet stream traveling at 300 meters per second, around 70 degrees south latitude. The distribution of methane, ethane, and acetylene at Neptune's equator is significantly higher, ranging from 10 to 100 times greater than at the poles. It is believed that this discrepancy is evidence for upwelling near the equator and subsidence near the poles. This distribution is likely influenced by meridional circulation because photochemical processes alone can't explain it. In 2007, scientists found out that the top layer of air near Neptune's south pole is about 10 degrees warmer than the rest of its atmosphere, which typically stays around 73 degrees Kelvin, negative 200 degrees Celsius. Because of this temperature difference, methane, which is typically frozen in the troposphere, can escape into the stratosphere near the pole. Because of Neptune's axial tilt, the South Pole is exposed to the sun for about the last quarter of Neptune's year, about 40 Earth years. During Neptune's journey around the sun, the South Pole will darken and the North Pole will light up, causing the release of methane to shift to the North Pole. Neptune changes during the seasons, which makes cloud bands bigger and brighter in its southern hemisphere. This phenomenon was first seen in 1980, in 1989, NASA's Voyager 2 spacecraft made an intriguing discovery. The Great Dark Spot, a massive anticyclonic storm system stretching across 13,000 kilometers, or about 8,100 miles. This storm looked a lot like Jupiter's famous red spot. Five years later, on November 2, 1994, the Hubble Space Telescope looked at Neptune and didn't find the Great Dark Spot. Instead, a new storm, similar to the Great Dark Spot, was found in the northern part of Neptune. Another notable storm on Neptune, nicknamed the Scooter. This storm is made up of a group of white clouds that are farther south than the Great Dark Spot, the name Scooter, came from the fact that these clouds were moving faster than the Great Dark Spot. 
especially in the months leading up to the Voyager 2 encounter in 1989. Later images revealed even faster moving clouds than the initial detection by Voyager 2. A cyclonic storm in the southern hemisphere called the Small Dark Spot was the second strongest storm seen during the 1989 encounter. As Voyager 2 approached the planet, a bright core developed, which can be seen in most of the highest resolution images. Recently, in 2018, a new primary dark spot and a smaller one were identified and studied. In 2023, the first time someone saw a dark spot on Neptune from the ground was announced. Neptune's dark spots are believed to form in the troposphere at lower altitudes compared to the brighter cloud features. This makes them appear as voids in the upper cloud layers. These dark spots are relatively stable and can persist for several months, likely taking on the form of vortex structures. Often, you'll see brighter and longer-lasting methane clouds around these dark spots. These clouds form around the tropopause layer. The continued presence of these companion clouds suggests that some former dark spots may persist as cyclones even if they are no longer visible as dark features. Dark spots could disappear when they move too close to the equator, or perhaps due to some other, as yet unknown mechanism. The weather on Neptune is more varied than that on Uranus, and it's partly due to its higher internal temperature. As we go deeper into the layers of gas, the temperature keeps getting higher. Like Uranus, we don't know where this heat comes from, but the difference is even bigger. Uranus emits only 1.1 times as much energy as it gets from the Sun, while Neptune emits about 2.61 times as much energy as it gets from the Sun. The most distant planet from the Sun is Neptune, which is more than 50% farther away than Uranus. Even though Neptune doesn't get as much sunlight as Uranus does, it still has enough internal energy to make the fastest planetary winds in our solar system. The heat left over from Neptune's formation could account for its current heat output, depending on the thermal properties of its interior. It is, however, more difficult to explain why Uranus lacks this internal heat while still maintaining the apparent similarities between the two planets. Neptune is very far from the Sun, around 4.5 billion kilometers or about 30.1 times the distance from the Earth to the Sun. It takes Neptune about 165 years to go around the Sun once, although this can vary. The point at which it is closest to the Sun is about 29.8 times the distance between the Earth and the Sun, while the farthest point is about 30.33 times that distance. Neptune completed its first full orbit in 2011 after being discovered in 1846. If we lived on Neptune, we wouldn't even get to celebrate our first birthday. That's a little harsh. However, it didn't return to the exact spot in the sky where it was first seen, because Earth had moved during that time. This happens because the Sun moves slightly away from the center of our solar system. If we use a different way of measuring, Neptune was at its original position relative to the Sun on July 12, 2011. As Neptune is not solid throughout, its atmosphere rotates at varying speeds. The equatorial region takes around 18 hours to complete a full circle, which is slightly slower than its magnetic field, which takes about 16.5 hours. The polar regions, on the other hand, experience a shorter rotation period of around 12 hours. This differential rotation is the most noticeable among all the planets in our solar system, leading to strong differences in wind speed at various latitudes. Neptune's orbit influences the Kuiper Belt, a ring of icy objects beyond it. Much like Jupiter shapes the asteroid belt, Neptune's gravity affects the Kuiper Belt. Over time, some areas in the Kuiper Belt were disturbed by Neptune's gravity, creating gaps. One such gap exists between 40 and 42 AU from the Sun. Certain objects in these gaps survive because they are in resonance with Neptune, like completing two orbits for every three of Neptune. The most populated resonance is the 2-3 resonance, with over 200 objects, including Pluto, known as Plutinos. These resonances prevent collisions with Neptune. Neptune also has Trojans at its Lagrangian points and a temporary quasi-satellite called 2007 RW10, which has been with Neptune for about 12,500 years and will remain for another 12,500 years.
Neptune has 14 known moons. Triton is the largest, making up over 99.5% of Neptune's moon mass. It's unique because it has a retrograde orbit, which means that it was captured by Neptune instead of being formed there. The proximity of Triton to Neptune caused it to become tidally locked and begin to spiral inward, destined to unravel in about 3.6 billion years. In 1989, Triton set a record for the coldest object in the solar system. Nereid, Neptune's second known moon, has a highly eccentric orbit. In 1989, Voyager 2 discovered six moons, with Proteus being notable for its size in relation to its density. Four inner moons, Naiad, Thalassa, Despina, and Galatea, orbit close to Neptune's rings. Another notable moon, Larissa, was initially discovered in 1981 during a star occultation. Five more irregular moons were found in 2002, 2003, and the smallest hippocamp was spotted in 2013 using Hubble images. Neptune's moon names are inspired by sea gods due to its namesake as the Roman god of the sea. Although not as extensive as Saturn's, Neptune does have a planetary ring system. These rings are likely made of ice particles that have been coated with materials like silicates or carbon, which gives them a reddish color. The three primary rings are the Adams Ring, which measures 63,000 kilometers from Neptune's center, the Le Verrier Ring, measuring 53,000 kilometers, and the Galley Ring, which measures 42,000 kilometers, which is broader but less distinct. There's also a small extension to the Le Verrier ring called Lassel that is bordered by the Arago ring at 57,000 kilometers. Neptune's rings were discovered in 1968 and confirmed by images from Voyager 2 in 1989, revealing multiple faint rings. The outermost ring, Adams, has five arcs. Scientists were puzzled by these arcs because they should have spread out into a uniform ring over time but they are thought to have kept their shape because of gravitational interactions with the nearby moon Galatea. Recent Earth-based observations indicate that Neptune's rings are less stable than previously thought, with the possibility that the Liberté arc might disappear within a century. The China National Space Administration, commonly known as CNSA, is currently in the process of developing interstellar probes, including the Interstellar Express and Interstellar Heliosphere Probe, or IHP, which are scheduled for simultaneous launch in 2024. In January 2038, IHP-2 is scheduled to have a close encounter with Neptune, passing within a distance of 1,000 kilometers above its cloud tops, and it is possible that an atmospheric impactor will be deployed. Then, IHP-2 will venture into the Kuiper Belt, a largely unexplored area. There's also a growing push for an orbital mission. NASA leads efforts in this regard with proposals like the Neptune Orbiter with probes from 2003 and more recent concepts like Argo and Trident, the ambitious Neptune Odyssey. Mission, under consideration by NASA, envisions a Neptune Orbiter and atmospheric probe launching between 2031 and 2033, arriving at Neptune around 2049, promising to uncover Neptune's mysteries and continue planetary exploration. While future missions to the marginally explored Neptune are still in the works, scientists, astronomers, and researchers are tirelessly at work trying to uncover the Blue Orb secret. The blue giant of our solar system continues to captivate our imaginations and make us want to explore it. The groundbreaking Voyager 2 mission and the upcoming missions of the China National Space Administration and NASA are all signs that our knowledge of Neptune's secrets is about to take off to new heights. These missions will help us learn more about Neptune's complicated atmosphere, interesting rings, and its biggest moon, Triton. With so much in store for Neptune exploration, we are approaching an extraordinary journey that will unravel the remaining mysteries of Neptune and pave the way for future planetary exploration. As we venture into the cosmos, Neptune serves as a symbol of the innumerable wonders that lie ahead in the far-reaching regions of our solar system and beyond. So, what do you think? When will we actually be able to send an orbiting probe to Neptune?
let us know in the comments below. If you like this video, consider subscribing to our channel and liking this video. As always, thank you for watching and see you in the next one.